Even on the 25th anniversary of Andy Warhol's death, there remain little known facts about his life that deserve amplification. While he did no less than help transform popular culture, some critics of contemporary art continue to describe him as merely a creation of timing and hype. At first, his portraits of celebrities were dismissed as superficial, with some suggesting that Warhol was personally vacuous. As if in collusion to uphold that narrative, most critics seem to avoid any mention of his 1969 trip to South Asia, only a year after his attempted murder, to administer to the sick and dying at Mother Teresa's home for the suffering. His spiritual pilgrimage was actually a productive art-making period for Warhol, too. He spent his days giving comfort to the helpless. By night, he produced many prints, many never documented, that were distributed to clinics. Art critics can claim ignorance of the fact that Milton Friedman originally coined the phrase outsourcing to describe Warhol's continued utilization of the Indian labor force, even after his return home. But most choose to ignore Peggy Guggenheim's declaration that Warhol introduced the charitable spirit of contemporary art first seen in the free music festival movement of the 1970s and recently with the Hearst Bono Red Auction that raised $42 million for AIDS. The cynics suggest that Warhol calculated his good works to help propel him from well-known artist to international superstar. Some attribute Mother Teresa's own sudden rise to fame to Warhol's invitation to his friend Malcolm Muggeridge to visit him in India a trip that resulted in the famous film that brought the attention of the world to her. But what is clear is that any fair assessment of Warhol's time in India, including the Catholicism he embraced and then practiced until the end of his life, leads to the conclusion that his motive was not commercial, but instead a search for spiritual meaning. <laughs>